The future of the Tsar is at stake as the rich coal and steel region prepares for a crucial election. The voters must decide to approve or veto a joint French-German plan to Europeanize their frontier territory. 96% of the voters turn out. Leading them is Premier Johannes Hoffmann, strong supporter of the plan for Europeanization. But opposition demonstrators noisily campaign to the last ditch. They ask the Germanic Tsar to defeat the plan as a first step to reunion with Germany. The vote is overwhelming defeat for Europeanization. Premier Hoffmann resigns, and the Tsar again may be a prize for Germany or France. Joining a solemn rain-swept crowd in London's Carlton Gardens, Britain's Queen Mother and Princess Margaret attend ceremonies honoring King George VI. Arriving to unveil a statue of the former monarch is Queen Elizabeth, to whom George VI was both ruler and father. With her is the Duke of Edinburgh. After a moment of prayer, the Queen reveals the statue of the sovereign who symbolized Britain's courageous defiance of Hitler's Luftwaffe during the grim days of the London Blitz. Elizabeth and the Duke of Gloucester, the late king's brother, pay silent tribute to the memory of George VI, living on in the hearts of his family and his countrymen. Air Force jet fighters stretching as far as the eye can see line the runway at Yuma, Arizona Air Force Base, scene of the 1955 rocket firing championships. The competing teams from far-flung bases around the globe are winners of shoot-off eliminations. Fifty specialists service and load each of the aircraft entered in the contest in the clouds. Ready for takeoff on the actual rocket firing at altitudes of 18 and 30,000 feet. At more than 400 miles an hour, the pilots must hit a 200 mile an hour towed target. A tattered target shot full of holes by America's supersonic sharpshooters. Hair is in the beauty news from Paris, where the latest style is for the girls to wear more of it, but not their own. This is called a hair turban. They're sometimes made of hair and sometimes of fur, and change shape easily, especially when it rains. Hair turbans come in different colors and different styles, each with a name. The inventor's name, by the way, is Ferdinand, not Harry. A jewel sets off the turban, a new hair look worth a second look, even in Paris. Great Britain is having its beauty problems, too, with the finals of the Miss World contest in London. Miss Britain represents the local girls in a competition that finds England locked in a global struggle. Miss Italy has enough voltage to put out lights. Miss USA also is trying for the title, which means $1,400 and an automobile. From South America comes Miss Venezuela, a contribution to international goodwill, lower tariffs, and better markets. The contestants line up for the judging, and this could be the start of World War III. But Miss Venezuela wins, and it's peace on the international scene. York Yankees receive a red carpet welcome on their arrival in Tokyo for a three-week 16-game exhibition tour of baseball crazy Japan. Leading the 56 players, coaches, executives, and wives is manager Casey Stengel, irrepressible manager of the American League champions. Defying a drenching rain, the Yankees make a triumphant entrance into Tokyo. Street crowds hail their motorcade while confetti showers down from windows. The Yanks have landed and the situation in Japan is well in hand. California's mighty gridiron machine grinds into high gear against California. In the opening quarter, the Trojan C.R. Roberts sweeps around left end, is hit, and fumbles. But John the Jet Arnett scoops up the pigskin and continues on to the California Six. On the next play, Arnett runs wide to the right. And then cuts downfield to score for Southern Cal. 
51,000 fans at Berkeley see the Trojans strike again as left-hander Jim Contrato hits end Leon Clark for a TD. California, which hasn't beaten USC since 1950, sends McGuire back to pass. But one-handing the ball, Gordon Duvall intercepts for Southern Cal and carries back to the Bears' 10. And Arnett scores his third touchdown as Southern California overpowers California 33-6. Michigan State, surprise winner over Notre Dame, tackles Illinois at East Lansing. State's Earl Morrow, faking a double handoff, drifts back for a long pass that's nabbed on a brilliant over-the-shoulder catch by Johnny Lewis. Climaxing the Spartan touchdown march, Walt Kowalczyk, behind bone-rattling blocking, circles left end for the score. Hoping for an upset, Illinois storms back as M. Linebeck passes to fullback Ray Nitschke, who is wrestled to the ground on the Michigan State nine. With fourth down and four to go, Linebeck rolls out to the right and, driving hard, catapults across for the TD. The stunned Spartans call on Morrill, who fades for a long pass that's hauled in with a miracle fingertip catch by Dave Kaiser. Completing the spectacular 60-yard scoring play, Kaiser romps into the end zone. Throwing up the game, the cool and clever Morrill goes to the air for Michigan State's third TD as the surging Spartans roll over Illinois 21-7.